Hello friends, Molly Ponfedith here, CEO of the SOAR Community Network and co-founder of the SOAR Community Nebula. Our goal this year is to bring to you 1,000 champions of change and community builders. And today I'm delighted to bring to you Tarnisha McCrary. Thank you so much for being with us, Tarnisha. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Well, you and I recently met, and uh, it was just one of those serendipitous moments, right? Mm -hmm. I was in, you were walking out, and we had a chance to chat, and the rest is history. So mm -hmm. I would love to feature all this great work that you're doing. I know that you are an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I know that you are a mom, a wife, mm -hmm. and someone who really wants to create something positive. Uh, for a specific community. So can you reintroduce yourself to the SOAR Community Network and our audience and talk a little bit about the work that you're currently doing? Yes. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Tarnisha McCrary. Um, I have been in early childhood education for about 22 years. Um, just to give you a little information about myself, I've been married 19 years at the end of the month to love of my life. He, uh, he's retired military, so we've traveled, done all the things. We have uh, three boys, um, 16, 13, and 12. So it's a very busy time as a mom and a wife. Um, being in early childhood education is my passion. However, it's very demanding, especially as being a director of operations in a center, you work very long hours. Um, and so I just decided that it was a season for me to kind of step away from 50, 60, 65 hours a week, <laughs> work week, um, and still be in my passion, but doing something else um, that will allow me to have some free time with the family, um, as well as still do what I love. So, Great. That's wonderful. So talk about your path to entrepreneurship. Let's go back in time. And is there a moment that you can share or perhaps people in your life that have influenced you, that have helped to kind of open this this world to you? Um, anybody that has shown you extra love, compassion, mentorship that you could highlight and feature? Yeah, well, I definitely got into early childhood education um, by way of family, because it's in my my line. My mother is um, has her PhD, so she's a teacher. Um, my aunt is a superintendent in the Hampton Roads area for public school there. My grandmother was a teacher, so it's very heavy in our family as far as education. So that's been instilled in me um, as a baby. <laughs> so that's always been the thing. As far as mentoring, um, I had a great mentor. We lived in Florida, we were stationed there. Um, and so she was in early childhood education. And she just inspired me to want to go to the next level. I started as like a nanny. I was I loved children. So even as a teenager, I would babysit. Um, then I went to actually being a nanny. Then I went to being at the preschool, like as a teacher while I was still in school trying to get my degree. Then I met my husband and we started a family. So things kind of changed. I was a stay-at-home mom too. So a lot of my mentoring, um, people who have influenced me comes from different um, areas. I mean, it could be a stay-at-home mom that influenced me to want to raise my kids a certain way, to actually being in the workforce and being around other um, high-impact women, like women that are just killing it, so to speak, in the in the industry. And I thought, oh, wow, I need to kind of step up my game a bit. So I have a mix, and I think that's what's helped me as far as what I'm doing now, um, because it's not just one person that I can point to that says. Um, you know, or have paved the way for me. It's, it's many. And they all are running in different areas of life. Some are stay-at-home moms, some are working, some are kind of doing both. And I just like to kind of chew on the meat with them and kind of spit the bones out and see where it fits for me. So, yeah. <laughs> That's great. You think of um, the community builders um, in your life and mm -hmm. those that really champion for positive change. What are some of the characteristics or attributes that you most admire and also not only admire, but are consistent in these types of uh, individuals? So do you want to pick on one individual or several? Do you want to just talk about a few different people or just well, one? A few different people in your life that you just feel like, wow, they're, they're really out there creating change or positively impacting their communities. What are some of those characteristics? Yes. Um, so... As far as my faith, I'm, I'm a believer, and so I can definitely point to some women of faith that have inspired me, and not necessarily just in my spiritual walk, but just as a woman, um, as a mother, as a wife, what they've spoken to me has been tremendous because it has allowed me to kind of shape as a wife and a mom. So whether it's if they wrote a book 
or if they are, sorry, someone's trying to get a hold of me. If they wrote a book or if they, if I listen to a podcast, there's several different women that have spoken to me um, in that way and have inspired me. I could think Joyce Myers or Priscilla Shara or um, Beth Moore. There are a lot of different women that I listen to that inspire me. And not that they're just women of faith, but they're maybe doing excellent as far as in business. And they do podcasts and teach you about how to run a business as a woman and as a wife and as a mom and be able to kind of balance, if you will, some of the hats that we wear um, as women, as being wives, as being mothers, but also wanting to be very or do very well in business. Um, and so that has all kind of fed me um, in a good way and has inspired me to be um, the best that I can be, you know, because we all are different. And even in looking to mentors, it's never a thing where I want to be exactly like them. It's more of, I want to be able to learn how they've done things so that I can implement in my life in my own way. Cause I, th I think that's the thing. We all have our own way of uh, what I believe God has called us to um, here on earth, but we just have to kind of figure that out. It's not given to us at birth, like you're going to do exactly this, but you just have to kind of walk through life and just watch it unfold, if that makes sense. And you'll make some mistakes, but you learn, you grow, you get back up and you move on. So, yeah. Speaking of doing things your way, when mm -hmm. you um, look upon all of the gifts and talents that you um, house in, in this package called you, called Tarnesha, mm -hmm and all of the life experiences that you've had, um, are there specific causes, movements, nonprofits that you give your time and your energy to to help advance their mission that you'd like to feature and highlight today? Yes, well, because like, as I mentioned, um, I am a believer, my family and I, we're very heavy in our church. Um, so we do a lot of outreach as far as with the church, like missions, um, we do local, we even help support. We haven't gone and done anything overseas, but we send others um, by sewing into them. You know how they do the fundraiser to say, I'm you know, I need money to be able to go to um, different parts of the world to be a blessing. And so we would sew into it. And I feel like when we do that, when we help them to get there, we're also part of that journey um, and being part of change. But we also do local as well. Um, we'll sometimes go do serve day where we'll go to different centers or go to homes or go to hospitals um, my, my husband and I are, are very heavy as far as going into hospitals and just sitting with others and praying um, so yeah definitely in our church community we are very heavy involved but we also do outreach I mean even with my neighbors my neighbor across the street just had a baby and so I think it's important when we have a neighbor that's right in the our neighborhood to reach out and see if they need anything prepare a meal um, just go and love up on them and congratulate them I think sometimes we try to um, go to the ends of the world and we should be but sometimes it also just starts right in our own neighborhoods just reaching to the left and right of us to be change yeah right that's right I think we do look to serve so far beyond our neighborhood or even mm -hmm. in our own families right but if you start there and you really fill up your cup, right? With starting yeah. with the closest vicinity of folks, the souls right. that need support, um, then it's just much more rewarding, I think, when you can expand beyond that. Like you can touch the people closest to you. Right. You feel lifted and feel loved and they feel a sense of um, nurturing, nurtured. Then you can uh, do more, I believe, out there in the world. In the world. And imagine if everybody just reached to the left and right of them. You know what I mean? If everybody did that. And we wouldn't need as many people to go so far to do it. Yeah. So. That's a great point. We spend a lot of time on this interview series because we have a lot of folks doing international work. So I just, it's really important to also remember that a lot of work is needed here at home. Yes, it definitely is. Yeah. Well, Tarnisha, I know that life has not um, been easy for mm -hmm. any of us. We, we don't... Um, have an experience, this human experience, without going through some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. What times have been difficult and challenging for you? Is there a quote, a motto, perhaps even scripture that really helps you to come back to center, to reset? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there is a lot. One of my favorite is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I say that every day, but I also say that when I'm going through something um, because it's challenging. Like I was saying earlier, being 
a businesswoman, a wife, a mother, trying to just balance life out. And whether you're at work too long, you start to feel guilty because you're not at home with the family. Or if you're at home with the family, you start to feel guilty because you're not working on your business. So it's always this thing of, oh my gosh, you know, what should I be doing? And I just have to kind of pause and say, you know what? If, if God's called me to this, I can do it. And I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And so that's kind of my go-to that I say. I also remind myself that I'm human. You know, it's not necessarily a quote that I say, but I always just say, I'm human. I'm human. It's only one of me. I can take a moment. I can pause. I also take moments throughout the day and meditate a little bit. I just kind of pause. It's, even if it's for 60 seconds, two minutes, I may spend a minute or two longer in the restroom. And just breathe and inhale. Breathing techniques do wonders um, throughout a very busy day. Um, so I usually do that. I'll just take a moment. And I actually learned that when my babies were little and I was home with them and my husband may be deployed, I would sit my babies in front of the TV and say, just watch this little 15 minutes. And I would go literally in the bathroom and just take a moment. And I didn't feel, I used to feel guilty about it, but then I said, no, I need this moment. I need this moment because it's better for them. I need to reflect, I need to pause. Um, and so that kind of started there and I just continued it even throughout my work day at work. I would just go in the bathroom and I'd be gone literally five minutes, um, set my timer and say, I'm in here for five minutes. Um, and I needed that moment. So yes, just throughout the day pausing, I would um, say quotes or scriptures I would just pray in breathing techniques. They do wonders. So, yeah. What would a better world look like through your eyes? What would a better world look like through your eyes? Hmm, that's a good question. I think a better world would look like being a servant because I think we all have been called to some point to serve. Um, but because of our own, I don't want to say selfish, but it is kind of selfish when we get into what our goals are to meet for us. Um, we often forget to kind of look to see how we can serve and make someone else better. Um, and so I think that's what a better world would look like. If we just kind of paused and looked to see what someone else may need, how can we meet, help someone else meet their goals? And I also have found in doing that, a lot of times my goals get met in the process when I'm helping somebody else. So, yeah. Well, can you share one or two ways that our community can best support you right now? What can we do to help advance your business, mm -hmm. help advance you as a human being? <laughs> I, I definitely think being a uh, listening ear, uh, because sometimes, you know, throughout all the things that we deal with on a daily basis, it's just easy uh, to be able to have somebody that you know you can go and talk to. It's a, it's almost like a comfort, but it's also encouraging, you know, because you're like, I can go and talk to this person, let my hair down a little bit. And I know when I walk away from the conversation, I'm not going to feel judged. They would have imparted some good wisdom in me, um, some encouragement. Um, and that's really what I need. I could probably list other things that I could use tangibly. But at the end of the day, I think to be a successful business person, um, encouragement and accountability is so vital because I think you're going to have these streams in business where you're going to go up and down and up and down. They're going to be hard days. They're going to be good days. It's just really life. Um, but at the end of the day, when we can get those things that are um, intangible, we can get those things that really feed our spirit and our soul. That's what helps. So for me right now, um, especially being a new startup as an entrepreneur, knowing that I have um, a group of community that I can go to and just kind of let my hair down a bit and just say, these are the things that I'm struggling with and not walk away judged um, or feeling as though, you know, shame or whatever, um, that is life changing and transforming. So that's, that's definitely what I would say, how you guys can help me. <laughs> We hope to support you and um, sounds to me like as a businesswoman and a mom and a wife mm -hmm. that you're in high demand between the phone calls and the beeps that came through the just like the <laughs> minute call. <laughs> so yep, that's important. <laughs> important to pause though and take moments for you. In fact, you were talking about the self, you know, the word selfish and I learned many years ago, I think a mentor of mine had said, we need to reframe how you say that. Mm. There's nothing wrong with being self-centered. Mm. Have to center the self to do all these things that will <clears throat> contribute to other people. Mm. And so I, I look at that word very differently now mm. than I did before. 
explored in the context of being selfish. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, it's about being self-centered. When I'm centered, when I'm focused, when I'm calm, I can do more, be more, experience more, and give more to the world. Yes. I really think it helps with burnout, you know, so that you don't become burnt out or you get to this place where you're like ready to have a nervous breakdown. (laughs) You know, I think it's just taking those small moments throughout the day to pause and reflect and just say, Hey, I need a moment for me because I know it's going to make me better. And when you're better, you're in a better position to help others. When you're not in a good place, it's very hard to help other people. It it just just is, you know, you've got to be healthy and whole for yourself so that you can help others. You know, you think about it when we get on the airplane and they go through the instructions and you pull down the mask and they always tell you, put it on your face first before you can reach to help somebody else. So that's definitely, um, I think, a good key for all of us to remember that we have to take care of ourselves first before we can really take care of anybody else. That's great. Can you let us know how we can get a hold of you or find out more information about you? Yes, absolutely. You can go to our website, which is www.therightstartnow.com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at The Right Start. Um, and you can also email us, info at therightstartnow.com. Great. Thank you so much for your time today, Tarnesha. I look Thank forward you so much. It's been a pleasure. To building our relationship. Thank you. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. For everyone who's watching, please remember to nominate yourself or someone in your community who's making a huge difference. Please visit us at Nebula dot soar community network dot com thank you so much everyone we'll talk to you really soon